In this video we will discuss the workflow for manual routing in Vivado. We will look at how indirect routing through placement and direct manual routing can reduce the skew in the bits of an output bus. During the routing step of the implementation process, Vivado connects all the drivers in our design to their respective loads. To do this, it takes several parameters into consideration, most commonly the timing constraints that we have defined for our system. However, it is possible that the routing picked by Vivado does not meet some special requirement of our design, even after achieving timing closure. This might be the case when we would like to have a routing delay be constant across implementation runs, or when we would like to reduce the skew between the bits of a bus that interfaces with an external component. In these cases, we might use manual routing to achieve our desired results. We will discuss two approaches to override Vivado's automatic routing, indirectly through placement or directly through manual routing. One way to indirectly affect how Vivado routes a net is by constraining the placement of the driving or driven elements, driver and load, respectively. If let unconstrained, Vivado will pick a placement for the driver and the load based on the many parameters that it tries to optimize, like routing delay, fanout, and resource sharing. In this case, it is possible that the routing will be too long or too short for the specific requirement of our design. By constraining the placement of the driver or the load, we increase the likelihood that Vivado will find a routing that meets our requirements. Usually, this means that the placement that we constrain will facilitate a more direct routing between the driver and the load. When performing indirect routing through placement, we must keep two things in mind. First, if we only constrain the placement of the driver or the load, there is no guarantee that Vivado will find the specific routing that we desire. It just becomes more likely. Moreover, there is no guarantee that Vivado will use the same routing the next time the implementation is run. Again, there is only an increased likelihood. If we are satisfied with the routing that Vivado performed after the placement and would like to keep it, we will need additional routing constraints to make sure it remains the same for all subsequent implementation runs. Second, overriding the placement chosen by Vivado might affect the time enclosure in unexpected ways. Depending on the complexity of our design, at the very least the routing delays will be different. It is therefore critical that we rerun timing analysis after the new placing and routing to make sure that timing closure has been preserved. Using manual routing in Vivado, we can define the exact path that a connection between a driver and a load will take. This is done by specifying the nodes through which the path will go. We can then describe our net as a list of elements in our FPGA fabric, in which the first element corresponds to the driver. The last element corresponds to the load, and the elements in between correspond to the nodes. For a given driver load pair, there will typically be more than one set of nodes that will successfully route a net. By specifying each node, and perhaps the location of the driver and the load as well, we can precisely control how a net is routed, which enables us to change the amount of routing delay on a net. We will now summarize a lab exercise that demonstrates how to use indirect routing through placement and manual routing in Vivado to optimize the timing of a 32-bit output bus in the BFT example design. You can refer to Lab 3 of the User Guide 986 for step-by-step -step instructions to reproduce the results presented here. We start by launching Vivado and creating a project based on the included BFT example design. After selecting all the appropriate options for the project generation, Vivado shows the default project view. Once our project has been generated, we can run placement and routing by launching an implementation run from the Flow Navigator. Vivado will ask us to confirm that synthesis will be run first, because no previous synthesis results are available. After the implementation is completed, we select to open the implemented design which by default opens with the device view, where we can see the placed logic cells and the routed nets in our target FPGA. Before using manual placement and routing to optimize the timing of the bus, we will use the report datasheet command to see what the timing looks like after the automatic place and route. Vivado reports a maximum bus skew of well over 500 picoseconds, as measured by the delay of each bit in the bus with respect to bit zero. 
Our goal is to reduce this skew to under 100 picoseconds. When we select bit 28 of the output bus in the device window, we can see that the output port is driven from a register through an output buffer. We can also see that the driving register is located far away from the output buffer. Highlighting all nets in the output data bus makes it clear that the default placement and routing are contributing to the SKU. We will manually place the registers of the bus closer to the I.O. pin that they drive, and with the same relative location between the register and the I.O. element for each bit of the bus. This should help reduce the skew between the individual bits. To manually place the registers of the output data bus, we must identify a placement site for the registers, use tickle commands to place the cells and reroute the connections, and rerun timing analysis to see if the skew has been improved. In the device window, we can identify a placement site for the registers. Let's take bit 0 of the output data bus as an example. To the right of its associated output pin, Y21, we find slice X0Y36. Here we can place the register that will drive the output pin. Because the index of the output data bus increments with each bit, and so do the coordinates for the slice, we can use loops in our tickle commands to perform the placement operation for all bits in the bus. Lines 1 to 3 unplace any cells that might have been assigned to the range of slices needed for our registers. Lines 4 to 6 place our registers in the slices that we just freed up. Line 7 places any remaining unplaced cells in the design. Line 8 removes any nets connected to the output register cells as a precaution. Line 9 routes any currently unrouted nets in the design. Line 10 makes sure that there are no routing conflicts. In the device window, we can now confirm that each register in the bus has been placed at the same distance to its corresponding I.O. pin. We rerun the report datasheet command to see how the SKU within the output bus has changed. We can confirm that the total SKU has been reduced. However, we still haven't reached our goal of under 100 picoseconds. We can see that the max delay is greater in the lower bits of the output data bus. We will use manual routing to increase the max delay of the higher bits, thus reducing the overall skew within the bus. Before we start manually routing the nets for the upper bits, it's a good idea to examine the current routing to see which optimizations can be done. We can retrieve this information with a tickle command. Vivado returns the routing information for each net. Here we can see that the nets are routed using identical resources up to the IMUX underscore L34 node. From this point on, different resources are used for even and odd nets. Our strategy will be to fix the routing of the first even and odd nets, and then copy them to the remaining nets in the bus. We start by selecting the net we want to route manually. We unroute the net and enter the assign routing mode to perform the manual routing. Vivado opens the interactive routing assignment panel on the right side of the device window. The routing assignment panel shows the neighbor nodes from which we can choose the next routing segment for our net, as well as the assigned nodes, which show the nodes that have already been selected. We can see that some nodes at the start and at the end of the net have already been selected. This is because they are the only neighbor nodes available. In the middle there is a gap, where we have multiple options to route our net. When we select a node right before or after the net gap, the neighbor nodes table is populated with a list of available nodes. We can also see the connection to each node highlighted as a dashed white line in the device window. Here we can choose a route that adds a greater delay than the direct connection we had before. We do this for the first couple of nodes and then ask Vivado to auto route the rest of the net gap. We also need to mark this routing as fixed to prevent it from being ripped up or modified in later routing passes. The first and second lines fix the lock and bell properties for the driver and the load, which are a prerequisite for performing the manual routing. The third line fixes the manual routing using a so-called directed routing string, which starts with the driver, ends with the load, and lists all nodes in between them. This directed routing string has a relative format based on the placement of the net driver, which allows us to reuse the string for other nets that use the same relative route. We repeat this process for bit 15 of our output bus, 
after which we will have a manual routing and its corresponding directed routing string for one even and one odd net. After that we can rerun the timing analysis of the output bus to see that the skew for the manually routed signals has been reduced. Now that we have one directed routing string for the even nets, and one for the odd nets, we will copy those to the rest of our nets to reduce their skew. We will use a sequence of tickle commands to achieve this. Line 1 stores the root path of bit 14 to the even tickle variable. Line 2 does the same for the odd nets. The loop in lines 3 to 5 stores the list of nets to be routed, corresponding to bits 16 to 31 of the output data bus. Line 6 unroots the specified nets, and the loops in lines 7 to 12 assign the routing from nets 14 and 15 to the remaining even and odd nets, respectively. Finally, line 13 reports whether the routing has been completed successfully for all nets in the design. If there are errors, we can run the root underscore design command to fix them. We can now rerun our timing analysis of the output data bus and confirm that our manual routing has brought the skew down to our initial target. In this video we looked at how we can use manual routing in Vivado to make our design meet requirements beyond the usual timing constraints. We discussed how net routing can be guided indirectly by manual cell placement and directly by specifying the nodes that a net must follow between a driver and a load. We then applied both of those strategies to minimize the skew of an output bus in the BFT example design included in Vivado.